Well, good afternoon to the Queen's Club and welcome to our second lesson in our Back to Basics course. And today we're going to discuss all of the different possibilities for declarer. We may even, as we go along, we we'll, may even touch on a few little things uh, to remember when you are a defender. So we might even look at things like opening leads a little bit and also look at um, when a few spot cards are played during the play of a hand, if you lead a low spot card, what does that mean? So, but the mo most of the focus for today's lesson will be on the different techniques that we need to uh, discuss, think about, plan for uh, when you are playing in a trump contract versus when you're playing in a no trump contract. So. Uh, Let's start off with um, a story that I wrote in the notes there, and it's quite a famous story. And it's about an Italian world champion, and he was playing with a, a, an inexperienced player. And when he put down his dummy hand, the inexperienced player called for a card from dummy and won the trick in their own hand. And then they sat and they thought and they thought and they thought. And the Italian world cha uh, champion couldn't. Um, hold himself any longer and said, um, sorry, partner, but you've already made your mistake. And th when I read that as a young bridge player, I thought that's very important. And it actually is extremely important that when dummy goes down, even before you play from dummy at trick one, uh, it's a good idea to make some sort of plan and try to stick with it. Now, plans that you make as a declarer are often broad. They're, they're general plans, and it, it can be difficult to, um, uh, to uh, know exactly what you're going to do from trick one up to trick five or six, because it can be de dependent upon where the opponent's cards sit and also how the opponents defend. But remember this, the Clara always has an advantage over a, a defender or a pair of defenders because it's the Clara who can see their partner's hand, they can see dummy. So that is always a big advantage. For defenders, you have to rely on more communication with the partner. But as declarer, you're able to uh, dictate the terms of how your partnership plays their cards. So remember, declarer always has that um, advantage, but you've got to take care of that advantage. And there's a few things that we have to consider when dummy goes down. And I'm actually going to touch here on the one at the bottom first. And that's something that my brother taught me a very, very long time ago. And I've found, uh, especially with um, a lot of new players, now uh, you're not a new, uh, new group, you're a group that's been playing bridge for quite a while. In fact, I know a lot of you have been playing bridge for a long time. But we always like to go back and touch on some basic point of, points of view and perhaps, perhaps look at things from a slightly different angle. One of the things he said to me is that when you're, new, when you're newish at a game, uh, you often need as many memory aids as you can, uh, you can rely on. And one of the most important ones was, he said, if you've got, let's say, ace, king, and queen in a suit, and it doesn't matter when you're declarer and dummy, which hand you win that in, whether you win it in dummy or you win it in your hand. He said, in order to um, improve uh, your memory, he said, win the lowest one. If you win the lowest one, he said, then you'll always know that uh, the higher ones are, um, are always going to be winners. So um, winning the lowest card will help you he said, because if you win the queen, for example, you'll always know that the ace and the king are high. Now, we don't always have that opportunity because we're often forced to win a trick in one hand or the other. But that was just a small thing. And he said, if you can start to build up these little memory aids, you will start to develop a mantra <coughs> in how you play the game. And that mantra can be very important. I'm just going to pop, um, I've got somebody, some speakers on there, so I'm just going to pop everyone on mute again um there we go and everyone we will open the microphones like we did last week uh about halfway through give a, people a few minutes break and then i'll open up the microphones at the end of the lesson 
and we can have a, a, a bit of a longer chat about anything about today's lesson or Monday's lesson. So back to the declare a play. So he said memory aids are very important. Um, one of the interesting things that I didn't um, uh, know at the early stages of bridge is that um, you can't actually have physical um, things to help you at the table. So for example, you can't have a calculator. I always used to think when I first played, that'd be a good idea. I can bring a calculator to bridge and um, I can add up all the points around the table. He said that you can't do that. In fact, he said, you can't even use your fingers. And I said, really? And I said, well, what if I use my fingers underneath the table? He said, as long as no one can see you, that'll be fine. So there you go. You can't use any, any memory aids, but you can use your fingers and your toes under the table. So that's memory aids. Now, let's have a look at a general plan. And general plan with declare a play will often depend on the approach, the approach you take will often depend upon the style of hand that you're playing. Meaning, uh, when you're playing in a trump contract, for example, you have to understand whether this is a hand where you should delay drawing trumps. In fact, should I be playing a side suit first or should I play the trump suit first? And then there's also hands with no trumps. And in no trumps, often we have uh, puzzling situations where should we play our longest fit with our best cards in them first, or should we try to play another suit where we can build tricks in that suit rather than play our longest fit first? And they're the things that we're going to discuss, especially um, in the different aspects of how to approach each one of the hands. Now, Another thing here, and I find this um, uh, a little bit trickier, is how do, you, how do you plan a hand for a number of tricks? Well, the first thing to look at is, how do you plan a hand at trick one, as in what action would you take at trick one? If you, if you have a chance that you could win the first trick, is it a good idea to win that first trick? Or should you be, what, do what they call duck the trick and allow the opponents to win that trick and perhaps then uh, win if they continue the suit a little bit later. Also, if you've got trick one mastered and you have a general plan of the hand, imagine what will happen if you uh, have a plan for trick two and it, it, it involves losing uh, the lead. Do you know what you're going to do at trick three? And I think that tricks one, two, and three are the, are the most important. It's the general plan that you have. After that, you, have, you can often change uh, your plan dependent upon uh, where the cards are located or how the opponents have chosen to defend. But the general plan, often we get one, we, we get one go at it. Often we say, okay, that's the plan I'm going to take. Hopefully the cards are uh, reasonably placed for my plan to work. So that's why trick one really is vital. And uh, it's that whether you win the trick at trick one, whether you win, uh, you win in dummy, whether you win in your own hand, and how you then approach. So let's look at the different types of approaches when it comes to declare a play, first of all, in a trump contract. So in the early days, we're always taught that you immediately go after the trump suit. Yep, that is you immediately draw the opponent's trumps out as soon as you can gain the lead as a declarer. Now, as you've found over time, that's not always the best thing to do because there's some hands where you really shouldn't be touching trumps until several tricks down, down the track. But how do you recognize which one of those hands you should be playing trumps on and which one you should be delaying drawing trumps? And believe it or not, that often depends upon uh, the side suit. So if you have an excellent side suit, now when we say side suit, we're talking about not the trump suit. If you have an excellent side suit and it holds eight or more cards in that suit, then that means the opponent's number of cards are five or less. If you start playing that suit before touching trumps, then the opponents, either with a high card that is the ace, they may refuse to take it straight away. And then uh, you make yourself vulnerable to declare or to the defenders trumping in. 
And if you yourself have high cards, of course, the, the defenders will trump in if you play too many rounds of the suit. So that's one of the indicators as to whether you should or shouldn't draw trumps. Draw trumps if you have a quality side suit of at least eight cards. Uh, if you don't have a quality side suit of at least eight cards, then you may have to look for other avenues in, under which to take tricks. Um, the reason that we want to draw trumps when we've got excellent side suits of eight or more cards is because we want to enjoy that length in the side suit. And as soon as we get the opponent's trumps out of the road, we can enjoy that length in the, in the side suits. Now, let's look at when to delay drawing trumps. So, uh, there's several at, um, aspects of when to delay drawing trumps. I'll give you a few. In fact, let's run down here and have a look at example number one, and you can see them for yourself. So, we're playing in a contract of four spades here. Uh, the opponents lead a diamond, and we have to decide the plan of play. Well, in order to know whether we should or shouldn't draw trumps immediately, I mentioned earlier that it's all about the side suit. Do you have any side suits in hearts, diamonds, or clubs that has at least eight cards and has a good quality of high honors in that suit? Well, in hearts, no. In diamonds, you've got seven cards with the ace king. Well, they're already winners. And in clubs, you've got seven cards with the king and the queen. So in, in all of these situations, uh, you can see that um, there's no great aspect of length in side suits to take if, stop a quick video there. Uh, there's no great um, length to take in the side suits. Uh, so therefore, there's no reason to draw trumps immediately. Now, if we delay drawing trumps, can we gain tricks in another manner? When I look at a hand such as this, I instantly think, well, I have a 5-3 trump fit. In the side that has the three-card trump suit, I also have a shortage. This shortage is in the form of a singleton heart. So if that's the case, whenever I trump hearts in dummy, I'm still retaining the length in the trump suit in the declarer's hand. So I started with five trump tricks because they're all solid. You can see them down to the, to the nine. And every single time I trump a heart in dummy, that brings my tally from five. If I get to trump two hearts in dummy, I'll get to have five plus two, which is seven tricks. So that should be a plan on this hand that we should consider um, uh, undergoing or undertaking. So on this particular hand, there's no great length and strength in clubs and diamonds. Therefore, we needed to look for another place in order to take tricks or decide as to whether we will attack trumps or not immediately. So on this particular hand, my plan is to delay drawing trumps, to void dummy in the heart suit, and then to subsequently try and trump as many hearts as we can in the dummy hand. So how about I pop those cards up on the table? Ace, queen, jack, nine, four, jack, seven, six, king, five, three, and queen, five. Opposite, king, ten, three, nine only, ace, six, four, two, and king, seven, four, three, two. Okay, now we're playing in a spade contract. Uh, the opponents have led a diamond, and my intention on this hand is to delay drawing trumps, to void dummy in hearts, and to trump as many losing hearts as I can with the short trump holding in dummy, because that will gain me extra tricks. Now, one of the things I have to consider here is the line of play, or how do we think we can construct the line of play on this hand? 
Well, in order for this to be effective, we have to be able to get across to the long Trump hand, that is the declarer's hand, uh, as often as we can in order to lead hearts so that we can trump in dummy. So on this particular hand, the opponents have led a diamond. Should I win with the ace and dummy or should I win with the king in my hand? Well, if my intention is to subsequently play hearts to trump in dummy, the king of diamonds is going to be an important entry to the declarer's hand in order to lead a heart to trump in dummy. So my choices are to win either the ace or king of diamonds. So I'm going to win the ace of diamonds in dummy. And then I'm going to void both, I'm going to void dummy in hearts. So that's achieved. The opponents might continue to um, uh, play diamonds in order to try and set up a diamond trick for them. So that's what they do. They play another diamond and I win the king. And now I'm in the long trump hand here in order to play a second heart and trump that with dummy's low spade. So already my trick tally has increased because I still retain the five trump tricks in my hand and I've already scored a heart rough in dummy. Now, I could try now a club perhaps cross to the queen. If that loses to the ace and the opponents take a diamond, that's okay, that's fine. But eventually what will happen is that I will gain entry to the north hand even if it's with a trump trick and I can play yet another heart, the jack, and trump that in dummy. So my tally has increased already to two tricks in diamonds. I'm able to build a trick in clubs because I've got the king and the queen, so one trick there. And then I've got five tricks in the spade suit. So five tricks in the spade suit. And then how many hearts did I trump in dummy? I trumped two hearts in dummy. So therefore my tally is now up to 10 tricks. So that's how you would attack a hand like this in, 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 in the sense that you want to first recognize, do the side suits have length and strength so that we may uh, enjoy that once the opponent's trumps are drawn? Or do I have some problems in the side suits that I don't have great depth? If I don't have great depth in the side suit, I need to consider another way of taking extra tricks. And on this particular hand, it was a case of trumping in the short trump hand, which is a little bit like what we call cross trumping, although that's not exactly what my intention was on the hand. I wasn't quite cross trumping on the hand because I was still intending to come across to declare as trump suit here and draw the trumps. In the meantime, I was going to take a couple of heart roughs in dummy. So everyone, I hope you can, I hope you can see that um, technique there. And it was all about looking at the side suits first. Do we have great length and strength? Or what constitutes great length and strength? Normally, at least eight cards, yes, in a side suit with a lot of top honors. That is, you know, missing one of the top uh, three honors or missing uh, perhaps two of the top five honors. That's what I would call a suit with good length and strength. Now, of course, you could have some seven card suits where you have wonderful tricks. So for example, if your side suit, that is not your trump suit, but your side suit was king two opposite ace, queen, jack, ten, four, I mean, that is only seven cards, but it's probably a suit that will gain you a lot of tricks, um, provided you can draw the opponent's trumps out. I've had um, moments where I've held side suits like this, in spite of it being great length and strength, I've needed to play it before touching the trump suit. Why? And we'll get to that in a second, because it may involve doing things such as discarding losers in declarer's hand. So, that is a, a hand uh, where you've got a side suit of seven cards, but because the quality is so strong, then th this is a, a, a suit that you would, pro a hand that you would probably draw the trumps and then enjoy the side suit. So let's 
move on. Okay. Now, we're talking about trumping. And often uh, uh, we trump in dummy because when we do trump in dummy, what happens is we build our tally of tricks. But that doesn't also apply to declarer. So on example number two here, again, it's a very similar hand to the one we just had. In fact, spades and hearts are the same with the exception that we've switched where the singleton is. The singleton is in declarer's hand this time and not in dummy. Now, if we were to start trumping hearts in declarer's hand here, we could only trump two. Would that do us any good? Well, uh, it wouldn't increase our tally of tricks because we will have started with five trump tricks in hand. And if we trump two hearts in hand, we've still got a total of five tricks, except they'll come in the form of two roughs and three trumps that you play. So you can see here by trumping hearts in the declarer's hand where the long trumps are, we simply haven't increased our tally. Our tally remains exactly the same. So if you're faced with uh, a situation like this, there are moments when playing, uh, when trumping in declarer's hand can be right. And that is if you've got a long suit in dummy. Yes, at least five cards. And the reason that you're aiming to play that suit is to simply set up the length in the dummy hand. So if a singleton heart here was opposite king, queen, jack five times, then you would, might play that suit. And then you might take a, a, a rough in your hand because your aim is to set up the length in that suit. But when dummy suit of jack seven, six here is opposite a singleton, then it will do you no good whatsoever to trump hearts in your hand willingly. The opponents may try to make you trump them, and there's nothing you can do about that. But if you willingly start trumping hearts in your hand, you are doing nothing but losing trump control. What does it mean by losing trump control? Well, if you have no trumps left in your hand, the hand plays exactly that way. It plays as no trumps. So that's why we choose trump suits. We choose trump suits in order to give us um, the control on the hand. And if we start reducing all of the declarer's trumps here, then we'll probably find that we have to draw out the opponent's trumps and we'll have no trumps left. So if the opponents play hearts, they'll enjoy um, heart tricks without us being able to get in. So how should we approach a hand like example number two? that uh, the possibility, there isn't any wonderful side suits here, but there is some chances in the side suit. And I think that the side suit that has the best chances here is the club suit. So on a hand such as this, if the opponents led a diamond, I would win the ace of diamonds. I would immediately draw as many trumps as I need, which would give me trumps left over in case the opponents do play hearts. And that way, that's my safety net. So it will give me trumps left over in case the opponents do play hearts. And then whilst I've got that control or safety net, I can then work on a suit such as the club suit. So in that club suit, it's possible I can build an extra trick by uh, perhaps giving up one trick to the, uh, an opponent's honor and uh, being able to set up the fourth round of the club suit. So that would be a case of where a seven card suit was uh, available for me in order to take um, some tricks based on length. So on this particular hand in example two, if the opponents lead a diamond, I win the ace, I draw out the opponent's trumps, and then I play ace of clubs, the club to the king. If the queen or the jack has dropped, so I'll show you that, what I mean by if the queen or the jack has dropped. So this is the club suit we're dealing with here, everyone. We've got uh, king 10, 9, 8. King 10, 9, 8. Opposite, ace 7, 4. The opponents have 
uh, a total of six of them, the queen, the jack, uh, the six, the five, the three, and the two. And I'm gonna cross off the cards as we play. So I'm gonna play the ace, and the opponents follow with two small cards. And then I'm gonna play another low one across to the king. And what we're gonna hope for is that one of the opponents plays a low card, and one of them is forced to play an honor. And if they do play an honor, I still have the 10 and the nine left over, and that I can force out the other honor. So if I play the 10, the queen will win, so they will take one trick, but then what will happen is that the nine will become a winner, and that means that we've risen our tally of tricks in the club suit from two suddenly up to three. And that's because we're playing a suit that has more than six cards or seven or more cards. And those, those suits do come up or those types of hands do come up on a regular basis where the side suits are, are the best side suit has seven cards in it. Okay, let's rub out that example. So I'm ho I hope you're getting a bit of an insight there, everyone, into uh, what type of hands that you would consider not drawing trumps immediately. Let's look at a few others. Let's look at making winners from declarer's uh, long side suit. So in example three here, we've gotten again into a, a contract of uh, some number of spades. Four spades looks like a good contract to me. In fact, um, you know, on a very good day, we might even be able to make more than uh, 10 tricks. We might even be able to make 11 or 12. But how would you go, what would be your approach on this hand, everyone? Let's say the opponents lead a diamond. How would you approach a hand such as example number three? A diamond lead? Well, think, think into the future of the hand. In the future of a hand like this, if we draw all of the trumps out, we'll then be left with a diamond, a club suit of King, Queen, seven, six, two, opposite four and three. And that means that uh, if the suit is not friendly for our side, meaning if the ace of clubs is not sitting in this hand here, if the ace of clubs is sitting in this hand here, it will be able to, you'll have to play the king or the queen to force it out. And also what will happen is if the suit doesn't break three and three, if you have no trumps left in dummy, then you could subsequently lose, in total, three tricks quite easily in the club suit. But how do we stop that from happening? How do we stop losing three tricks in the club suit? Well, when dummy has a shortage as it does here, and declarer has some great length in their hand, this is a combination of the two things I discussed earlier. Yeah? One of those things is, that you can utilize dummies uh, shortage, that is the doubleton club here, with the short trumps by playing that suit before touching the trumps. So this would be my order of play on a hand such as this. If you can see that hand there, where is it? There we are, just up there. My order of play would be at trick one, if they lead a diamond, I would win the diamond king in dummy. At trick two, I would immediately play a club. Why? Because I need to do something with the length here in the club suit. And the best way to deal with that is by uh, playing or voiding dummy in clubs and then trumping whatever number of club winners I need to with dummy spades. So at trick two, I'll play the club three, uh, a trick, uh, the opponents will probably, let's say they win with the ace in the north hand and they play uh, another diamond. At trick uh, three, I will win the diamond uh, ace. At trick four, I will play the club queen. So trick three, I played the club three across to my king, which lost to the ace. And now at trick four, I play the club queen. So good time to take stock. 
How many clubs have gone? Well, we've played two rounds of them. That's eight, which means there's five more clubs left. Well, you have three. That is the seven, the six, and the two. And the opponents have two. So at trick five, I'm now going to play a little club. Now, whether both opponents follow suit or not, I'm going to um, trump that in dummy with the spade 10. I will then play at trick six and seven. I'll play the heart ace. And I will trump a heart in my hand with the spade four. Trick six will play the heart ace. Seven will play the spade four. Uh, a low heart. And we'll trump in hand with the spade four. And then at trick eight, we will trump another club in dummy. Club six, and we'll trump that with the spade king. And then all we have to do is play the trump back to hand, and that should be the end. So it's interesting, everyone. We never actually drew trumps on that hand until trick number nine, which is quite fascinating. And what's that to do with? Well, there's no side suits with eight or more cards and great strength. So therefore, what we must do is focus on another aspect of how we can build our tricks. And quite often, the first cab off the rank is, does the short trump holding, and the short trump holding in this instance, everyone, would be the dummy here, king 10, three. Does the short trump holding hold, have a singleton, a void, or a doubleton? Yes, and in this instance, it does. And it's also opposite some length and some strength in the declarer's other suit. So that's why we delayed drawing trumps here, because we wanted to be able to have some trumps left in dummy to take care of any losing clubs that we have here. And you can see this, um, it's almost an embarrassment of riches in the trump suit. We've got ace, king, queen, jack, ten, nine of trumps. It's funny, I'm often asked a question from players, should I draw trumps when I have good trumps? the top ones, or should I draw them when I don't have top trumps? So what you'll find is that uh, when you have hands with very good solid trumps, that means that a lot of your high cards are in the trump suit, which means you're probably a bit fair in the other suits. If that's the case, as we've noted, you need to look for other avenues for tricks. That is by uh, trumping in the short trump hand. Often when you have weakish trumps, you tend to have good side suits with solidity, aces, kings, and queens. So if that's the case, then what do you need to do if you've got good, long, solid trump suit, uh, side suits? You need to play trumps early. So that may be a case of leading a trump and losing to the ace, leading another trump and losing to the king, and finally being able to get or to draw out those baby trumps from the opponent's hands. Declare a play is often a case of the right, it's the right um, horse in the right race. It's being able to work out how do I approach this hand and if you can spot things, and that's what I'm endeavouring to do today, uh, spot things for you uh, that will lead you towards um, the right direction on some particular hands. Okay, let's move on. And let's look at something that we call throwing losers early before playing trumps. Okay, we're in this contract of four spades here, everyone. And a number of you uh, have a chance to play duplicate bridge. I know quite a lot of you do. And I know um, Queen's Club has a fantastic duplicate on Fridays. Uh, lots of tables and lots of good competition. And uh, with their duplicate, it's often run on a uh, match point pairs basis. And match point pairs basis means that uh, uh, your score will improve 
whenever you take over tricks. And in this particular hand here, it looks like you will make your contract of four spades, even if you lose the ace of spades, uh, a top heart, and a top club. So you'll still make 10 tricks. But with a hand such as example four here, uh, you should be uh, trying harder to take the 11th trick and being able to get a better score. And uh, with this particular hand, it looks like you can. Well, how do you do that? Well, it involves, when the opponents lead the king of hearts, it involves taking the ace of hearts immediately. And you'll see that you've got a losing heart then between declarer and dummy. If you play a trump, the opponents will win the ace of trumps and they'll take their winning heart. So what should you do in order to stop them from doing that? Well, win the ace of hearts at trick one, but at trick two, play the four of diamonds across to the ace, the nine of diamonds back to the king, and then take the third round of diamonds, the winning queen, and dump the losing heart. At that point in time, now at trick number five, you can finally play a trump and lose to the ace. But when the opponents win the ace of trumps and they play a heart, you can now trump in. And that brings your trick tally from 10 tricks up to 11 once you eventually lose the ace of clubs. So that's a classic case of when you should delay drawing trumps again. That is, if you need to throw losers early. Yep, you need to throw losers away early so that you can um, uh, make sure that you void in this particular hand, void the heart suit and not unnecessarily lose to a heart. And what are the odds there that the opponents will trump the first or second round of diamonds? Not very high because you've only got five of them, which means the opponents have eight. Okay. Everyone, I'm now leading to the, the cross trump. The cross trump. So, the cross trump is slightly different to trumping in the short shorthand or the dummy hand. Often the cross trump is a contract where you've got maybe a 4-4 four, four trump fit. And you'll notice, I mentioned this to a class this morning, that uh, eight card trump fits that is four, four trump fits, five, three trump fits, can be a little bit trickier than nine card trump fits. That is five, four trump fits, six, three trump fits. And why is that? Because with five, four or nine card trump fits, we can often draw the trumps immediately and then go about our way because uh, we'll have sufficient trumps left over to start cross trumping and doing all of those things. But when you've got an eight card trump fit, we're often struggling to find tricks and we need to be careful in how we approach these hands. Well, look at example five here. What would happen if on the opponent's king of hearts lead, if you drew out three rounds of trumps? If you drew three rounds of trumps, you would be left with one trump in declarer's hand and one trump in dummy. So that would mean that, yes, you've got, you could trump a heart in dummy. That'd be an extra trick. That means that your tally would then rise from four trump tricks to five trump tricks. Well, that's not enough because we need 10 tricks for our contract if we're going to be um, playing in four spades on this hand. That might be a little bit... Um, uh, how can I say, ambitious to play in four spades. But if you look closely, four spades is almost 100% guaranteed. How do I do that? Well, when the opponents lead the heart, you win the ace of hearts immediately. Then you play the queen of diamonds to the ace of diamonds, a trick number two. And then you trump a diamond in your hand, you trump a heart in dummy, you trump a diamond in your hand, you trump a heart in dummy, you simply cross trump, and that will bring your tally of trump tricks to four winning trumps in declarer's hand and four heart roughs in dummy, 
which will mean that you'll then have four trumps plus four trumps is eight trump tricks and two aces. So those hands do come up. And again, what is the test? The test is, do we have any side suits here with great length and great strength? And the answer is absolutely not. Therefore, how do we gain extra tricks? We have to gain them by um, uh, delaying drawing trumps. And in this particular occasion, then that would obviously be done by cross trumping. Okay, well, I'm just gonna pop a couple of example hands on the board. Pop a new share up. And I've got a few hands ready to go. And um, interestingly enough, both of those hands have a little bit of mini mini maxi in it from uh, from Monday and I'm going to focus here on the north hand you've got a, a minimum one no trump opening uh, sorry um, minimum hand uh, less than a one no trump opening but the same shape so if you had an extra three or four high card points on this hand then you would definitely open the bidding with one no trump so the fact that you don't means that the nature of your hand is that it is balanced and uh, you're going to have to open one of a suit. And if partner, for instance, replied one spade, then you would rebid one no trump. And that shows or, or um, uh, suggests to partner that the nature of your hand is balanced and because it's not a jump in no trumps, it's the minimum number of no trumps which would uh, promise the minimum number of points. Well, that's not what happened here. What actually happened is that when you opened a club, your partner responded one heart. Well, that's great, you've got a heart fit. So showing a fit, obviously in a major, takes precedence over every, for everything. So we're gonna raise hearts, and we're raising one heart to two hearts. Well, in the midi midi maxi table, what does that mean? Well, I raised, did I jump? No, it was a non-jump bid, non-jumps for the opener, promise a minimum hand. That is around about 12 to 14 points. Do you have that? You do, perfect, fits perfectly. Okay, back to partner. Well, partner's got an easy hand over here. They've got nine, 10, 14, 16 points, but they also know that your bid is limited. And this is the, this is the big advantage of being familiar with the mini midi maxi table. If you know the partner has nothing more than about 14 or a, a bad 15 points there, your balanced hand with, with 16 points here is nowhere near enough points to go venturing towards slam. Therefore, you would make a simple sign off in four hearts. I was asked a very interesting question this morning and people often talk about something called shutout bids. And they say when partner bids game, is that a shutout bid for me? And here is the definition of a shutout bid. A shutout bid is only ever saying to partner, you can't bid again, provided their partner has a limited hand. Let's have a look at the example of that on hit here. Is two hearts a limited bid? The answer is yes. It showed 12 to 14 or 12 to a bad 15 points. So that means that two heart bid is limited. So when this hand here bids game, that would be a shutout bid. Yep, this hand wouldn't be expected or um, allowed to bid anymore. I'll give you another example. This comes up quite often, especially with new players, when they pick up a big hand with 22 points and they open two no trump, and their partner bids three no trump. And then they go, wow, I've got such a good hand, I'm gonna bid again. But the point is, partner did shut you out of any further communication. Why? Because your two no trump was a limited bid. If partner then signs off in game, that's it. That's the end of the auction. But if partner, for example, is unlimited, you as my partner open one club, I bid one spade, now, is my one spade bid limited? No, it's not. I'm six points, 
I'm a new suit, I'm unlimited right up to a very big hand. If you then bid four spades, jumping to game, that's not a shutout upon me. I'm allowed to bid again because I am unlimited. So therefore, if I had a good hand with 12 or 13 points, I would then probably venture on towards uh, going to a slam. So that's the bit of the understanding about the whole idea or the, or the misnomers around something that they call uh, shutout bids. Okay, back to the hand in question. So our partnership has gotten to four hearts on this hand and the opening lead is the Jack of Diamonds. So let's make a general plan. So what's the first question you ask yourself with general plans? First question I ask myself is, is there any side suits? Yeah, with great length and great strength. Well, absolutely. The club suit. I've got ace to four clubs opposite king, queen, jack to four. I can only enjoy that suit if I make sure that the opponent's trumps are drawn from their hand. So if that's the case, uh, what's my plan at trick number one? Well, should I win the diamond in dummy or should I win the diamond in my hand? Now, for entry purposes, I don't think there's any problem which hand I win this uh, first trick with. Therefore, in order to keep things a bit more fluid, I think I'll win with the honor card in the short side first. That way, if I win with the king of diamonds first, at some stage, then I've got a low diamond to play back to the ace queen. If instead I was to win with the ace or the queen, then my king would block the suit. I assume you can all see that. So if I was to win with the ace or queen at trick number one, the king would block the suit. Now, some people would say, well, you've already mentioned about a memory aid. Well, if you're one of those players that often forgets whether a card is high or not, uh, you might do yourself a favor here and just win with the queen of diamonds. I'm very happy for you to do that. But if you're past that point, then my suggestion is win the first trick in hand with the king. And that allows the fluidity of playing a low diamond across to the ace queen later. So our plan is, because we've got a good long side suit, to draw trumps. Have you ever heard of a rule called eight ever, nine never? Eight ever, nine never is in reference to, the eight and the nine are in reference to, the number of cards that you have in your long suit. Well, in the trump suit here, we've got eight. If we had nine, then uh, that means the opponents would have two. The top card that you're missing here is the queen. So if you picture the opponents with four cards only, yep, that is, um, we've got nine and they've got four. I think I said two a moment ago. That was a slip of the tongue. If you happen to hold nine and the opponents have four, then if you play off the ace and the king, it's likely that the queen, missing four of them, will drop in two rounds. That's where the nine never comes from. Why is it never? Because the thing that we have to consider is what we call a finesse. Now, finesses uh, involve having uh, what we call 10 ace positions or finessable positions. What's the most famous finessable position? Well, if you've got the ace queen in one hand and you've just got small cards in another hand, well, if that's the case, then you would always lead towards the ace queen. If the next hand plays low, you simply finesse the queen. The ace queen, therefore, is known as a ten ace. Now, in this heart suit, I've got the top ace and the top king, and I'm missing the queen. But the hand that holds the jack and the top honor, that is the hand that forms the ten ace. So what is the ten ace? The ace jack. That is the ten ace. So the plan is to always take the top card opposite that ten ace first. So my aim is to play the seven across to the king just in case the queen falls singleton. If the queen falls singleton, 
that means that I wouldn't have taken any unnecessary first round finesse of the two to the jack, and it's suddenly lost to the singleton queen. So the plan is take the first round uh, top card and then finesse on the second round. So seven of hearts to the king with the intention of finessing the jack of hearts on the second round of the suit. That's where the eight ever comes from. Ever means to take the finesse. Nine never means never take the finesse because the queen is likely to drop. So we're in a case of eight ever, so that's our plan. Let's play a low heart. Wow, the queen's popped up already. Well, that's nice and easy. If the queen's popped up already, what does it tell us about the, the location of the other three cards? Once the queen and the three have gone, that queen surely must be a singleton. And that means that this hand here is east, has got the 10 and two small cards. So now I think that we can afford to draw all of the trumps out from the opponent's hands and then enjoy our four top clubs and our ace queen of diamonds. So when I play another heart here, and this hand plays the six, should I play the ace, the jack, or the nine? I'd love some input here while I have a glass of water. Should I play the ace, the jack, or the nine? Love to hear, everyone. Don't be shy. <laughs> so in this instance, uh, I can play east for the 10, and if I play the ace or the jack, the 10 won't drop. So I must, therefore, finesse the nine, and sure enough, west shows out, which we knew was going to happen. I play off the ace, and now when I play the jack, the 10 will drop. Well, it's easy going, uh, going from here, because now I simply play a low diamond to the ace queen, I throw away one of my spade losers. And then I've got four top clubs, everyone. And I'll give the opponents the last two tricks. So once I take the four top clubs, there's 11 tricks. So what was the key on this hand? Well, the key part of this hand was, first of all, recognizing when dummy went down, how, uh, whether this was a hand where we should draw the opponent's trumps immediately. How do you recognize that? Well, you recognize that based upon the side suits. So if the side suits have length and strength as they do here in clubs, ace to four opposite king, queen, jack to four, then you can only enjoy that suit if the trumps are gone. Then we had to work out how do we tackle the trump suit? So how we tackle the trump suit was a, cl a classic case of eight ever, nine never. So if you hold an eight card suit with the ace, king, and jack, but you're missing the queen versus a nine card suit where you have the ace, king, and jack missing the queen, with nine cards, you simply play the ace and the king, hoping to drop the queen in two rounds because you're missing only four. But with an eight card fit, you're missing five and the queen is highly unlikely to drop in two rounds. So you go for the 50% line of play. The 50% line of play uh, encourages you to take a second round finesse. So what did we do here? We played the seven of hearts across to the king intending to finesse, but the queen actually dropped in the west hand. So then we did finesse east here for the 10 of hearts. Once we got all the trumps out, we enjoyed our clubs and our diamonds, and we got our 11 tricks. You notice everyone there that 11 tricks is better than 10, especially if you're getting a chance to play in any duplicates. Let's have a look at uh, example two here. Okay, your west and a partner has opened one heart from the east side. South says no bid. And it's your response on the west hand. I'm hoping that um, you're familiar, or and if you're not, I'm about to um, show you something. So 
that, uh, that they call uh, the weak freak rays. And what's the weak freak rays all about? Well, anytime you raise one of a major to four of a major, it's actually not a hand with good high card points. It's typically a hand with only up to about eight points. Yep, somewhere up to around eight points. I mean, hopefully you won't have zero, but I mean, let's say, you know, five to eight points around about that point range. And why you would jump to game is because you've got five trumps to go with partner's five card major suit opening. So that 10 card trump fit often means that your partnership will take an enormous number of tricks that are not simply based upon having lots of high card points. So that enormous number of tricks that they take, uh, you can often take those extra tricks through simply making them on a cross, cross trumping or cross roughing the hand. So uh, the one thing you need with this five to eight high card point range is five trumps and what will help enormously is a singleton or a void. And once those things are put together, that means that uh, you are taking often what we call, uh, uh, it's a bit of a, a double shot, meaning that you might make your contract or you're hoping partner will, but even if partner doesn't end up making their contract, then you're probably stealing a contract from your opponents. It's a bit along the same lines of preemptive bidding. We're stealing based upon having a lot of trumps. So the flip side is if you're dealt the hand with the big high card points like the West hand here, 13 points, that means you're forbidden, forbidden to bid four hearts immediately. And everyone, I do think this is a very good thing to learn. I think if you leave the one heart, four hearts, one spade, four spade bids as the weak freak raise. Freak because 10 card trump fits are less common, of course, than eight cards and nine cards. And weak because the point range is only up to about eight points. So with this hand, you have to change the suit. And we know from last lesson, new suit means forcing, but also means unlimited. Now, just care, um, being careful about this here, so that we remember that the response at the two level in a new suit or a shift at the two level promises 10 plus points. Yep, so one heart, two clubs, 10 plus. Well, partner bids two no trump. Well, what do we know about two no trump? It's not a new suit. It's either an old suit or it's no trumps, which means that if it is uh, no trumps, it must fit into the midi midi maxi table so the opener has bid two no trump how many points are they promising 12 to 14 15 to 17 or 18 to 19 any thoughts 12 to 14 15 to 17 18 to 19 thank you robin well done uh mini as robin just suggested 12 to 14 she, uh, East has bid the minimum number of no trumps at the same level the partners responded, therefore minimum hand 12 to 14. Well, that's perfect for West because West now knows that uh, slam is not going to be a possibility on this hand, uh, absolutely. So West can simply sign off in four hearts. And they refer to that everyone as a delayed game raise because now it will promise real high card points. That is, real values, enough values uh, to a big game immediately. So, East is our declarer, we're in four hearts, and the opponents lead the king of spades. Let's look at opening leads here just for a second, everyone. So, thoughts about an opening lead here? Uh, would you ever under lead an ace? against a trump contract. You can do that against no trumps, but you should uh, never underlead an ace against a trump contract. In fact, you should never lead a suit headed by the ace without the king. So the ace of clubs here is headed by the ace, but you don't have the king. Even if you had the queen or the jack, 
you should never lead that suit against a Trump contract. Here, we've got a sequence of honor cards and spades, king, queen, top of the sequence and spades looks like a good spot to go to. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lead off with the king of spades. Okay, back to the Clara. What's the plan of attack to Clara? Uh, do we have any side suits that are long and solid? Well, we've got two tricks here in the Ace King of Diamonds. We've got the Ace of Hearts here. Well, Dummy's got a singleton. That's very interesting. If Dummy's got a singleton spade opposite my Ace, I can probably start trumping spades in Dummy. But something in my mind is stopping me from doing that. Can anyone think of why it would be a poor idea to trump both of those spades in dummy with the perhaps the king and the jack? What's going to happen? We're sort of, it's a classic case of borrowing from um, Peter to pay Paul. So whilst we're gaining extra tricks by trumping in the short trump hand here, once the king and the jack are, are gone, I think what we'll end up doing is we'll end up making the ten of hearts into a winning trick by force, by power. So that doesn't seem to be a sensible idea. So we need another way to gain some tricks on this hand. Perhaps we could utilize dummy's uh, decent side suit, king, queen to five. Now, uh, is it so strong, this side suit, and do we have so many cards in the side suit that we should avoid playing that suit before drawing trumps? Well, no, because we've got a doubleton over here. Dummy's got the king and the queen. My aim on this hand is to actually try to make some length out of the club suits, club suit. So utilizing my entries in the right order, before I touch the trumps, and because I might use those trumps later on as an entry back to dummy, I'm going to win the ace of spades and immediately play from a very good technique in any form of declarer play, no trumps or trumps, is to play from weakness towards strength. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to play a low club. South plays low. I play the king, and it wins the trick. How interesting is that? The reason that's interesting is because it means south has the ace. If I can get back to my hand again and lead another club, south will have no choice but to play the ace, which will make my queen into a winner. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back to my hand with the diamond, and I'm going to repeat that club play. Repeat the club, they take the ace. My queen is now a winner. I play low. So let's take stock in the club suit. How many clubs have gone? We've played two rounds of the suit. That's a total of eight, which means that dummy has three left, which brings our tally to 11. The queen is a winner. The opponents only have two cards left. So I can always take more than just the queen of clubs, I can definitely get another club trick on this hand. So the opponents are going to attack a bit of a weak spot for me by playing a diamond to my ace. So now I think finally it's time to play a few trumps. There's five out against me. So I play low to the jack. Two have gone. Three more trumps left out against me. I'm going to take two more out with the ace. But I'm not going to play any more trumps just yet. Why? Because I'm going to turn my attention back to the clubs here, and I'm missing two of them. And it's probable that both of them are in the same hand. So if I trump a club in my hand, and then go back to the king of hearts, that means I've got two club winners. So let's try that. Play a club. 
North throws away. I trump in, South follows. And now with one more trump left against us, I play that trump to the king and dummy. And now my queen of clubs and my nine of clubs are winners. I throw away the losing diamond, the 10 drops, the nine is a winner, and I throw away a losing spade. And then I've got one more trump trick that the opponents take the last trick. You see, this, this was a difficult, this is the most difficult hand of the two lessons that I gave you everyone to play. I'll just rewind it um, and look at the opening lead here again. But it's interesting to note that, uh, and what, this is what makes declare a play difficult, is that not every hand that we pick up is it a, is it a, a simple case of uh, winning the lead, drawing the trumps, and then playing the side suits. Because quite often we end up uh, with not enough tricks in the bag. So how do we go about um, uh, going with transport back and forth between declarer and dummy. Uh, how do we go about setting up extra tricks? Does it um, warrant us uh, trumping in dummy? Should we be playing a, a, a side suit first? Well, again, I go back to the first step that I keep saying to you, and that is, uh, if you have a good side suit with eight or more cards, then it tends to point towards drawing trumps first. If you don't have that, then you need to look for other avenues uh, in order to take tricks. Everyone, okay, how about we have a few minutes break? Um, I'm gonna open up microphones if anyone would like to ask me a question. If someone would like to grab a quick cup of tea and we'll restart in four minutes at 2.15. Let me just open the microphones. If anyone has any questions. Good morning. Can you make Julia coffee, please? Thanks. Everyone, feel, feel welcome. I've got the microphones open now, so um, uh, you can freely, freely chat. Um, if you'd like to um, uh, ask any questions, please do so. I'd, lo I'd love to hear from you. Um, and even if there are questions about uh, last uh, Monday's lesson, okay. when we spoke about the new suits, and old suits and mini mini maxi all of that i'm going to have a few sips of water if you'd like to ask a question you'll have to um, press your face bar uh, to actually um so that i can hear you <coughs>
Okay, everyone, um, welcome back. Um, just before we move into no trumps now, I'd like to look at uh, the last little piece of um, the lesson here in relation to uh, something they call the roughing finesse. I know a lot of you are familiar with the term of finessing, but the term of, of roughing finesse, what does that mean? Well, what it means is this. In example number six here, I'll just pop my little notation button on. In example number six here, we're playing in a contract where spades are, are the trump suit. Dummy has three small trumps and a singleton heart. Now, opposite that, the Clara has five quite solid trumps and ace, queen, jack, ten of hearts. Now, if De Clara was to draw all of the opponent's trumps out, that means the, if the opponents had five of them, then uh, Dummy would be left with no cards in the spade suit. And in the heart suit here, you've got ace, queen, jack, and ten opposite a singleton. So you're missing eight hearts to the king. It's almost 100% certain that De Clara would lose a heart trick. Is it possible to uh, not lose a heart trick on this particular hand? Well, I think it is. As long as you have a trump in dummy, then De Clara can uh, perhaps draw two rounds of trumps, leaving one spade in dummy and one heart, and then play a heart to the ace and lead the queen of hearts. If this hand here is sitting with the king and they cover the queen, dummy will trump in and the rest of the hearts are winners. If on the queen of hearts, so ace of hearts, the four goes, queen of hearts lead. If this hand has the king and doesn't trump, then dummy simply discards another suit. And they repeat the play. They lead the jack. If north covers with the king, they trump and the 10 becomes high. If north doesn't cover with the king, they discard again. And then uh, if they lead the 10, they can simply trump it in dummy either way. That's what we call a roughing finesse. So it's not a traditional finesse of leading towards ace queen and putting in the queen. It's a, it's a finesse where you cash a card, voiding the other suit, and then you lead a top card through, quite often it's the king, through the king, and if they cover, you trump. If they don't, you discard. So that brings the odds up of playing in that suit and of not losing any tricks. That brings the odds up to much higher than hoping that the king will drop um, under the ace or after one finesse. So let's move on to declare a play in no trumps. Okay, everyone, the overarching principle of declare a play in no trumps, and it's the same for a defender, I might add, is it's all about length. Length, length, length. So what does it mean, length? It means playing a suit where between yourself and dummy, you have more cards than the opponents do. Well, that occurs, and often it will occur in no trumps at an off, often, uh, often, most of the time, that is. Uh, it'll occur in no trumps when you only have seven card fits. Why? Because often with an eight card fit, especially in the major, you would choose to play in the major. So that's why we've got to get used to playing these seven card fits in no trumps. Let's have a look at a classic example here, example number one. Your, your partnership has gotten to a contract of three no trump, and you have a bunch of six card fits. Six spades, six cards and spades, that is three and three. Six cards and hearts, three and three. Six cards and clubs, three and three. And you've got a lot of top cards. When I give a hand like this to my new players, 
they instantly play ace king queen ace king queen ace king and then uh, they finally play a diamond and the opponents win and what do they do they take the 13th card in all of these suits that's the 13th card in in uh, spades uh, clubs the 13th card in hearts and then the clara always falls a trick short so what do we do on a hand like this well there's only one suit with seven or more cards and that is diamonds you might be missing the top cards in diamonds but it shouldn't stop you from playing that suit that's why you need in no trumps to be persistent i mentioned this last week when we were declaring some hands in no trumps it's all about being persistent if the opponents for example lead a heart you should win uh, let's say with the queen of hearts and you should play a diamond yep knocking out one of the ace king or queen so let's look at that so if the opponents if the opponents lead let's say a heart your aim on this hand would be to play a diamond i'll just go through it trick by trick i'll talk about trick one they lead a heart which you win with the queen at trick two you play a diamond at trick three they need another heart which you win with the uh king at trick four you play a diamond at trick five they lead another heart you see this is a game of persistence no trumps it's always the same and often one of one of the players is um deluding themselves i might add um, they lead another heart you win the ace and then at trick six you play a third diamond now when you play those three diamonds everyone you were losing tricks on every single occasion the first time it might have been to the queen the second time it might have been to the ace and the third time it might have been to the king but what did that persistence do that persistence meant that eventually the fourth round of diamonds or your jack of diamonds became a winner that's what no trumps is all about it's about this um, persistency uh, playing in playing suits where you have more cards than the opponents it's all about losing tricks in order to win tricks okay so that's a simple uh, example of no trump play at a basic level but let's start to look at some other aspects of no trump play and how we can improve our technique so that we can uh, improve our ability to take tricks example number two in the no trump hands so we're playing in a contract of three no trump with these two hands together the opponents have led a diamond the king of diamonds i think and uh, you let that win they play another diamond you let that win and they play a third diamond and eventually you win with the ace of diamonds in your hand well i'm going to ask you a question if the jack of clubs was the two of clubs then how would you play this hand so i'll just write that and we'll look at just the club suit here everyone simply the club suit if we had ace king um eight five three four three in clubs opposite queen and not the jack but the two well count the number of cards in the suit we've got six here in in on, on the long hand and we've got two in this hand that's a total of eight the opponents have five so how is this suit likely to break well two-thirds of the time just over two-thirds of the time it will fall three in one hand and two in the other which means that your queen ace and king should be able to take care of all three of those uh, uh, rounds of the suit if it breaks three and two that is so what do you do you first of all take the queen the high honor on the short side you then lead the two across to the king if both opponents follow two rounds 
then there's only one card left, so the ace would take it, and then you would run the rest of the cards in the suit. Now, if I was to change things slightly here, so that it, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, ace, king, eight, four, three, opposite queen, two, but queen, jack, which is the example you have. Well, if dummy had an entry in another suit, that is, let's say if the king of hearts was sitting over here in dummy, that would be very easy. We would take the queen jack of clubs and we would cross over to another suit and we would run the rest of the club tricks. But in this instance, we don't have that choice. So what should we do? What we should do on this hand is we should take the queen on the first round and then we should play the jack. And on top of the jack, you must overtake with the king. Why? Because you need to be in the dummy hand in order to be able to run the suit. So you play the jack, you overtake with the king. Hopefully the suit will break two, uh, three, two. If that does happen, then you are in the correct hand to take, take the ace and run the suit. Now compare that to taking the queen and the jack and dropping the four and the three on it. Okay, your ace and your king will be winners over there, but how will you ever get there? There's no other entry to dummy, and the opponents certainly aren't going to play the suit for you. So this is one of those hands where you have to um, go against the grain or whatever feels right, and you have to overtake in a trick, wasting two honors at the same time, but it was a necessity because it's the only um, avenue to success on the hand. Okay, that's what we call overtaking. Maintaining that transport between declare and dummy. Oh, everyone, and quickly, I can also show you something that they call unblocking. So if this was a suit in no trumps, ace king opposite queen jack. 4-3, then you'll find in no trumps, very early in the play, you should, if you have your, if you're confronted with suits like this, then these are the suits you quite often have to play very early. You have to unblock those suits so that you can um, enjoy all of the winners. So if this is, let's say, the diamond suit in a 3 no trump contract, then Early on in the play, you should choose to play the ace and the king. And then hopefully, uh, dummy might have an entry. Let's say their entry is in the form of the ace of clubs. Well, then later on, you cross to the ace of clubs and then play those cards. So it's important that you unblock. I mean, it doesn't have to come in the form of the ace and the king. Sometimes it can come in a different form. It might be a case of, uh, Ace Jack opposite uh, King Queen four three same thing. You would first take the Ace and then the Jack, and then you would cross over to Dummy via the Ace of Clubs, and then you would take the King and the Queen. So these unblocking situations um, happen quite often in no trumps, and they're more prevalent in no trumps and more important because you don't have the fluidity that you often will have in a trump contract. Trump suits often give, up, give us an ability to go back and forth between declarer and dummy. Okay, sometimes you are faced with suits such as uh, example number three here. You're faced with suits such as ace, king, seven, six, five, four of clubs here, opposite three, two. Well, how many clubs do the opponents have? Let's have a look at that. The opponents you have, ace, king, seven, six, five, four, opposite three and two. So this is the club suit. Just in case you haven't noticed, my artistic skills are reasonably limited, everyone. Three and two opposite ace, king, seven, six, five, and four. 
What am I missing? I'm missing the queen, the jack, the 10, the nine, and the eight. So it's five cards. How are they likely to be breaking on this hand? Well, 68% of the time, they're likely to be breaking three and two. That's just two thirds of the time. There's a great way to remember that, everyone. If you're missing five cards, then they're likely to break uh, three, two, two thirds of the time. So it, they're simply inverted. They're likely to break three, two, two thirds of the time. There you go, easy way to remember it. So if we have to lose a trick in this suit, then which, suit, which, which card should we lose and when, or which round of this suit should we lose? Well, if you play the ace and the king and then give up a card to the opponents, so let's say the ace and the king, the ace draws two, the king draws two, and then you give up a trick to the queen. Wouldn't it be a better idea for the fluidity or the transport between the clear and dummy that on the first round of the suit, you play the four in one hand and the two in the other? What happens then? Well, the opponents might win a cheap trick. The opponents might win a cheap trick with the eight or the nine. That's fine. But then later on, when you play the three back to the king, you'll drop two more cards and then you're in the correct hand to play the ace, dropping the queen, and then you can run the whole suit. Now, that can often depend upon uh, entries or uh, entry cards or transport to that hand. But it's also a case of not wasting an entry unnecessarily. So that's what we call, uh, we talk about if you need to lose a trick in the suit, a deep trick, then it's often not a bad idea to lose that trick uh, early on. One last principle I'd love to talk to you about before we get on to the uh, idea of holding up an ace. And that is that, for example, quite often in no trumps, uh, let's say our club suit, our club suit is uh, ace, queen, jack, uh, six, opposite, king, five, four. Uh, king, king, jack, six, two, there you go. And then in diamonds in dummy, we have the queen, the jack, the 10 and the two. And in this hand over here, we have the king and the three. Now, whilst the club suit looks very attractive to play early on, if you do play that suit early on, those clubs may be the only entry to those potential diamond tricks. So what I'm saying is that if you play off your clubs early, and I'll make it even more glaring, uh, if you play off the, uh, if I give you just two clubs, if you play king of clubs and a club over to the ace, queen of clubs, jack of clubs, taking all of your tricks, you haven't um, unleashed the true potential of your diamond suit. So the idea, as I was suggesting earlier, is that it's not all about um, taking your winners in your long suit straight away. It can also be about using that long suit in order to get back and forth between the two hands. So how would I approach this hand? If I gained the lead early in one of the major suits, the first card that I would play would be the king of diamonds. If the opponents don't win the ace, I would persist by playing another diamond over to the 10. If they still don't win the ace, I'll play a third diamond. If they win the ace then, I'm now in control because now I can play the king of clubs in my hand, a low club across to dummy, and once I take the winning clubs, I'm in the same hand to also take the winning diamonds. Now, if I'd taken all of those clubs out early, I would never have been able to get back to dummy to enjoy the extra diamond tricks. So that's what I mean about sometimes your entry management between declarer and dummy 
is actually very important. So let's have a look at a couple of example hands here. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about something they call the ducking or the holding up play. Quite often in no trumps, uh, where we have a, a critical suit, and that critical suit can be a suit where we have not only great strength in the suit, we have a, a reasonably weak, weak suit, but we also have uh, not much length in the suit. So the opponents end up having um, normally at least eight cards in the suit, and you've got the ace. Well, you've got the ace, but you've got two extra cards in the suit. If the opponents lead the king, and you've got the ace and two small ones, it's often a good idea to let the opponents win that trick. And then when they continue on with another round of the suit, if you were able to hold up that ace for three rounds and win the card on the third round, specifically the third round of the suit, then you may have been able to cut communication between declarer and dummy. And I've got a couple more hands to show you. Here we go. So, you pick up this hand, 16 points, a five card minor. Um, at some stage, I'd, uh, I mean, in the future, uh, I'd love to talk to you about what if that minor, that five card minor, was a five card major? Would you choose to open one no trump or would you choose to open the major? So, really, what I'm trying to say is this Does a one no trump opening bid deny five cards in a major suit? My opinion is that. Uh, if I have a particular balanced pattern, such as a five, three, three, two shape, then I'm actually saying um, I actually ha have a balanced hand, as I do here. Whether it's a major or a minor, it's imperative that I open one no trump on this hand, because if I don't open one no trump, I don't have a proper rebid. And you must know that from the mini midi maxi lesson. So imagine that's a five card heart suit. I open one heart, my partner bids one spade. I've got 16 points over here. What can I rebid? If I bid one no trump, doesn't my partner think I'm 12 to 14? If I jump to two no trump, and remember, there's no midi when I'm rebidding no trumps. Why? Because with 15 to 17, I should have opened one no trump. So if I now rebid two no trump, partner thinks I've got 18 or 19 points. So that's why it's quite important with a 5 3 3 2 pattern, whether your five card suit is a minor or a major, that you should aim to uh, open the hand with one no trump. So in this instance, it's a minor, so we don't have anything to quibble about and uh, the opponents lead the king of spades. Well, everyone, this is a, a pretty good hand, but I have one obvious flaw. And that obvious flaw that I have is that I'm missing most of the spade suit, and my longest suit, which I'd love to play in order to be able to get tricks, is missing the ace. So this is a hand where I've got um, problems if the long, the hand with the long spades also holds the ace of clubs. But it's possible if the hand with the long spades doesn't hold the ace of clubs that I can do what they call cut the communication between the two hands in the spade suit. So that's what I'm aiming to do here. I'm hoping that the spades are breaking five in one hand and three in the other. And I'm hoping the player with the three cards in spades holds the ace of clubs. So my intention is to, first of all, break the communication. So on the ace of spades, king of spades, I'm gonna let them win. 
first round, I've ducked. When they play the Queen of Spades, I'm going to duck again. And then that means that when I win the Ace of Spades, I'm winning the third round of the suit. And I'm hoping now, I'm hoping to have broken the communication between the opponents. That is, I know that there's still two spades left out there in the opponent's hands. If the person with the Ace of Clubs holds those two spades, there's nothing I can do. But I would still need to play the club suit. If I play the hearts and the diamonds, then all I will be doing by playing short suits is, but is to set up the opponent's length. I have to take the bitter pill now and instantly play a club. So that's what I'm doing, a club to the jack. South wins the ace of clubs. Well, let's hope that South doesn't have any spades. South doesn't, there you go. So now when they play the queen of hearts, if we were to have a look at the north hand, north sitting over there with two winning spades, but south has no spades to get across to their hand. So after the queen of hearts to the king, you can see that the rest of the tricks are there for east west. I simply win the king of hearts, take all of my winning clubs because they're all high. And now I've got the ace king queen of diamonds and the ace of hearts. So all of those tricks belong to us. So that's a classic case, everyone, of, of ducking until the third round of the suit in a no trump contract when you're holding the ace. And more particularly, it's all about how many cards that you have between you and partner. If you've got uh, six cards or less, and in this spade suit here, you had five. So if we reround to the initial opening lead, you've got three and two is five cards and spades. And you've got the ace in the hand with the three cards. Then this is an example of when you could duck. If you had an extra card and dummy, that is you had six cards. Again, same principle. You would aim to duck. Even if you had one less card and dummy. So that is ace to three opposite a singleton. Again, you should duck for two rounds of the suit, hoping to break some sort of communication between your opponents. Okay, one more hand here. And this hand, everybody, or this time, now our partnership is in a three no trop. North's opened a no trop, and dummy has raised to three no trump. Again, the opponents have led a suit that's a little bit precarious for you. But the good thing about a hand like this is that luckily enough, it was North who was declarer in no trumps. And why is that important? Well, it's important because the, the tenuous suit that declarer has, has two small cards in one hand, and king, jack, another, in, in this instance, the declarer's hand. So if we, you were to switch the table here and imagine that the south hand here was declarer, then any heart lead would go through the king, jack at trick one. That would be poor. So what this is referred to in bridge as right-siding a contract. I'm playing the contract from the right side so that the opponents, when they lead the critical suit, they have to lead a round into my holding. So the first part of, of the mission was accomplished in that you are, you are right-siding the contract. You're playing three no trump from the best side. That is the side where the honor cards in the critical suit are protected. So what happens at trick one? Three. 10. Interesting. What do we know about a player in third seat, in third position? 
what would you normally do in third position as a defender when the first two cards were low? Low, low, third, hand, high. So if West contributes the 10, what do we know about West's heart holding? Well, what we know is that we're missing the ace and the queen, so that 10 must be the highest card West has. If that's the case, then once we win the jack here, we're left with the king and the seven, and that means the east must hold the ace and the queen sitting over the top of my holding. If that's the case, I need to be able to either take my tricks straight away, or in the event of losing the lead here, I've got to make sure that I don't lose to the hand that can hurt me. Now we're gonna sit here and have a look at this hand, study it for a moment, because I'd really love to know from, it, from anybody, which is the danger hand for me? Is it east or is it west? And when I say danger hand, meaning which player do I not want to gain the lead? Uh, which player do I want to uh, keep off lead if I lose a trick? Would I be happy or prepared to lose to west? Or would I prepared to lose to east? So Robin, you're suggesting that I would pre you'd be prepared to lose the lead to east. And that's right, because if I lose the lead to east, the only suit they can hurt me in is heart but East would again have to lead around into my king. So where is this leading everyone? Well, let's count our tricks. We've got one in the bag in hearts. We've got the ace and the king of spades, so that's up to three. We've got ace, king, queen of diamonds, so that's now up to six. And we've got ace, king of clubs, so our tally is up to eight tricks but we need a ninth. Now, the club suit looks like a place where we should be able to get a ninth trick. Why? Because we've got eight of them. Now, we do have eight tricks in, uh, eight cards in clubs, but remember the rule that we spoke about earlier today, eight ever, nine never. What does it mean? It means if you've got nine cards with the ace, king, and jack, in fact, here we've got ace, king, jack, but eight cards. If you have nine, you play the ace and the king, the queen is more likely to drop. But in this instance, we've got eight. So if we have eight cards, the queen is not likely to drop. Therefore, what is the better odds? The odds are to finesse one of the players, east or west, for the queen of clubs. Now, we don't need all four club tricks for our contract. We only need three. So it's possible that we could lose a trick in this suit here in clubs and still be able to build up our nine tricks. But if we are to lose the lead, we can only afford to lose the lead to east. Therefore, if we're going to finesse in the club suit, we have to make sure that we finesse through west into east. All about keeping that danger west hand off lead. Because if west wins the queen of clubs, they're going to put a heart straight through our gizzard. Straight through our gizzard and east is going to enjoy all those luscious hearts. How do we keep west on play? Well, we make sure that we play the clubs through west. At trick number two, we play a club. And at this point in time, if we play the jack and that loses to the queen, West will play a heart. So don't do that. Play the king of clubs. And now play the jack of clubs from dummy. And it doesn't matter if West plays the queen. If they play the queen, you win the ace. The ten is a winner. And if they play low, then you have a 100% uh, 
uh, guarantee for your contract by simply playing the six of clubs. And then if that loses to the queen, it doesn't matter because East is on lead and your king of hearts is protected. That is, if East plays another heart, your king is a guaranteed trick. If they don't play another heart, then it means that you've up to a tally of nine tricks because you've built the extra club trick here. You've now brought your tally of clubs to three. Three clubs, three diamonds, one heart, two spades. And now virtue is rewarded, everyone, because on the jack of clubs, East plays low. So now instead of making nine tricks, you're now going to make 10 tricks. And now we simply take our side suit winners. East West have got to make sure that they keep length with dummies. So just uh, go to the previous trick and just have a look at some issues here for the defenders. And on this third round of clubs, West had to make a discard. And the one suit that it was very important for West to keep hold of was diamonds. And you may have heard of that saying where um, uh, teachers often say, make sure that you keep length with dummy as a defender. So if dummy's got a four card suit and you've got a four card suit, try to keep length with that suit. Try not to discard it. Even if it's four cards to the 10, it's important to keep the length. If Declare is keeping those four diamonds, you should keep those four diamonds. So in this instance, you can throw away heart, a heart here because Hartman's got the hearts covered. And <clears throat> Declare in our plays, King of Diamonds and another diamond to the Queen. They cash the ace and you've got the last diamond covered. So the Clara simply goes back to um, taking their ace and king of spades. And everyone, you, I mentioned earlier when we were talking about trying to make more than just the minimum number of tricks in our contract. I'll just finish off the play. Well, that's the end of it. So the opponents simply take the last three tricks and we take 10 tricks. I mentioned earlier about. Um, uh, when you were declaring and trying to make more than just your contract because every over trick makes a difference. It's exactly the same for defending. Yet oddly enough, defenders find it much easier or, or, or harder, so I should say, to focus and, and make sure they don't throw the wrong cards in the end game. And often defenders simply do uh, discard too quickly without thinking or watching um, for basic situations such as keeping length with dummy or keeping length with one of declarer's bid suits. And in this instance, that's why it was important for West to keep the fourth round of diamonds. So declarer ended up coming home in that contract and they were rewarded because they played the club suit in the correct manner. Okay, everyone, um, I'm going to open up the microphones now and see if anybody has any, any questions. But um, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you. I hope, I hope you've enjoyed those two lessons. I hope they bring back some of the good uh, basics for you all. Um, the, I do find the lesson with mini, midi, maxi very important for your bidding structure. Understanding the, between old suits and new suits. And also, Something that I've become uh, more attuned to lately as a, as a bridge teacher is that it's very important for players to not only know uh, about their bidding, but to make sure that you improve your card play. Card play is what makes us able to understand our potential in the bidding. If you can see the potential for a number of tricks when dummy goes down, you might then say, okay, I can make 10 tricks in this contract. And if I can make 10 tricks in this contract, then I should be trying to bid accordingly. So everyone, thank you. And I'll open up the microphones.